Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to return to the motherland of Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last couple of years. They are still a relatively new addition to the Scottish beer scene, but they have built up a very, very good reputation for themselves. If people were to ask me about this brewery, I would say that they're best known for their different kinds of New England, hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs. But uh, they do a number of other styles these days as well, and they tend to do them pretty damn well in my experience. Now, the beer we're going to have a look at today is a little bit of a special one. It's a style that they produce a little bit less often, but one that I know they can do very well. And it's also got a little bit of a twist to it that I don't think we've had from this brewery yet on the channel, if memory serves me correctly. So needless to say, I'm very, very curious to see what this one's going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So yeah, for this review then, we are going to head back to the motherland of Scotland, like I said. We're going to go over to Glasgow, which is a good, fun city, a very nice place that you should visit if you get the chance. The people are great. And we're going to go to Yoker, to be precise. And that means that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from the wonderful Overtone Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Our Barley Aged. It comes in at 12.5% ABV, so it is a bit of a monster. And this is a barrel-aged Imperial Stout. If memory serves me correctly, this will be the first barrel-aged beer that, I ha that I'll be trying on the channel from Overtone. I do have another one that's in the possession of my good friend Harry, which was the very first uh, barrel-aged beer that uh, Overtone released. But yeah, I haven't managed to try that one yet. We need to sort that out. But uh, yeah, our barrel-aged is 12.5% ABV. It's produced in uh, collaboration with the wonderful Loch Lee Distillery, who are from the Kilmarnock area in the southwest of Scotland in Ayrshire. And uh, yeah, it's produced using some of their barley, I believe, and also uh, part of the beer is aged in one of their barrels. These guys are a very, very new distillery, family owned, and there's more and more of these popping up across Scotland, which is, uh, which is great to see. So yeah, I think this should be really interesting. This beer was produced to celebrate both Loch Lee and Overtone's fifth anniversaries. So yeah, really looking forward to this. Let's crack on and see what this beer has in store for us. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery and I'll also tell you a little bit about the distillery involved here as well. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, it's the links to my uh, other reviews that I've done from Overtone Brewing Company so far. I'll also put a link down there to the Loch Lee distillery website too and we'll see about putting a link there to the other uh, whiskey to the whiskey reviews that hopefully i can do in the future from these guys i do want to do some more malt reviews on the channel at some point in the future but there's all uh, the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the support that you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer uh, using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the little search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, province, prefetch, or whatever you like. If I've reviewed beers or whiskies indeed from the area that you search for, uh, they will pop up. Failing that though, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Scottish playlist along with a number of other things. That is being added to whenever I get the opportunity here in Hong Kong because there are a few Scottish breweries that make their way out here. And uh, you can check out the list of whiskey reviews that I've done on the channel before as well. But uh, yeah, check everything out. There's some really nice stuff on the channel these days. And uh, yeah, we will be continuing to add to that, of course. But yeah, let's go on to the brewery notes then, and I'll tell you a wee bit first off about Overtone Brewing Company. So, Overtone Brewing Company, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Glasgow, and the company was founded back in 2017 by Bo Wei Wang, who is originally from Beijing in China. So he'd been a home brewer for a number of years before founding the brewery, and the name Overtone is taken from his love of techno music, and you'll see the sort of techno style circles and things on most of the overtone artwork. Um, but Bo Wei hired Dan Miller to come in as his brewer 
Uh, he's from New Hampshire in New England over in the US and he previously worked as a head chef but also as a brewer in England, New York and in Scotland for Six Degrees North who of course produced some lovely Belgian style beers. But also involved at the brewery is Martin Conaghan who had worked in the craft beer scene in New Zealand and he takes part in the brewing as well but does a lot of other things around the uh, the brewery too but these days Charlie Irving's also involved in the brewing and he comes from a background of home brewing and previously worked for another local brewery in Glasgow but the brewery itself can be found in the New Albion Industrial Estate in Yoker near Renfrew and Clydebank which is where, where my grandparents grew up and they began their operations back in 2018. So the brewery don't have a fixed range as such, but they're always producing different beers. Uh, but like I say, over the years, they've become very well known for their New England hazy IPAs, and they were the first brewery in Scotland to really focus on this style. Uh, but over the years, they've continued to expand the brewery infrastructure. I'm not sure how many litres they produce a year. I've never ever found that figure. But as of February 2024, when I'm producing this video for you, these guys have produced just over 200 different kinds of beer. And yeah, and that number will no doubt continue to increase over the next wee while. But yeah, that's everything I can tell you about Overtone Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram uh, to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped, and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's go on then to talk a little bit about Loch Lee Distillery, just a little short bit about these guys. So Loch Lee Distillery, are based in Craigie near Kilmarnock in Ayrshire in the kind of southwestern part of Scotland. So these guys are a lowland whiskey distillery. Um, but the story goes back to 2006 when Neil and Jen McGeeich purchased the site, which had been a 220 acre dairy farm up until then. Up until 2014, they continued to work with cattle, but then in 2015, they trialed growing 50 acres of malting barley, and this went really well, and so they decided to take this one step further. So in 2017, they began the conversion of the former piggery buyer and midden into a distillery and they converted the cattle sheds into warehouses to age the whiskey. But all of the licenses were obtained in 2018 and so the distillery was commissioned that year and uh, the first whiskies, I believe, were released uh, for tasting in 2021 because obviously whiskey has to age for three years before you can release it and they've got various things sitting there to age uh, a little bit further as well. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Loch Lee Distillery. I've not actually tried any of their whiskies yet, if memory serves me correctly, but I will need to look into that when I get back home. I would love to do more whiskey reviews for you on the channel. That's something that we really need to look at, because I did develop a love of whiskey when I was working at the Bishop's Arms uh, in Malmö. That was really good. We got to try a lot of different things there. So yeah, let's... Um, Let's leave it at that for the history section of the video. I'll put the uh, link to Loch Lee Distillery in the video description for you below and you can check that out as well. Uh, and hopefully we can review some of the whiskey sometime. But let's go on and actually have a little look at the beer itself. So I'll just let you have a wee look at the can. The artwork on this one is of course a little bit different compared to what we've seen from Overtone Brewing before. But oh, other way around, there you can see the typical side art of the overtone can there you can see 12.5 percent abv it is a little bit of a monster um it tells you that the hops in this one uh, is simply magnum which is produced in many many different places um, i did write down a little bit from the untapped page about the beer this is brewed with 12 different kinds of malt which includes caramel chocolate chocolate wheat, chocolate rye, and a cara bohemian, and it's aged in a variety of barrels that include bourbon, oloroso sherry, shaved and toasted and recharged uh, barriques as well. Or am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, barriques. Uh, but yeah, the Loch Lee side of things is quite interesting as well, because I believe there are some Loch Lee distillery barrels uh, and barley used in this beer as well. So um, yeah, 12.5% barley-aged imperial stout and um, the way they do these ones that are kind of blend you know i think they they brew up the batch of stout they put it in the barrels and then they blend it together at different ratios to to get it uh, to get it nice basically so yeah 12.5 percent abv this one this was a nice find in out of the brew here in hong kong and i had to buy it obviously because it was overtone so this is the first 
Scottish uh, beer review that I'm filming for you here in Hong Kong. So that's quite exciting too. Uh, yeah, let's get this guy out into the glass then and see what it has in store for us. I'm really looking forward to this. So, you can smell that as soon as you open it. Yeah. This is my Friday evening beer. Like this Friday, I'm pretty tired and I just wanted uh, to stay in enjoy a nice kind of stronger beer relax and watch a film so that's what we're doing tonight with this one but yeah anyway and um, before the head on this beer disappears you can see it poured with just about a quarter to a one-third finger of a frothy i would say dark tan head there certainly not the darkest head that i've come across some medium-sized bubbles on the surface of the liquid there but mainly foamy i'll just let you guys have a little look at that head there. I'm not sure how well you can see it. I need to get a, another stand for this camera so I can bring the beer in a little bit closer. It's just the height that's a problem. But yeah, you can see there some medium sized bubbles on the surface, but mainly kind of light and foamy. But as you would expect from an Imperial Stout, this beer is pretty much black as night. If I shine the light through it, you can see it's got a little bit of that kind of Coca-Cola Pepsi coloured edge to it. Not much in the way of visible carbonation, one or two big bubbles on the side of the glass, but a few little ones just coming up toward uh, the surface there. And this head has just disappeared to be a very kind of thin, wispy, foamy layer there. But yeah, um, in terms of what you'd expect appearance wise from an Imperial Stout, this is bang on the money. So yeah, remember the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use, that goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any barrel aging that you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect its colour as well. But uh, yeah, the yeah when it comes to Imperial Stouts, it's very difficult to affect the colour of these just by putting adjuncts and things. And I've only seen it done once and that was by uh, Poo Asta when they put some beets into the beer. And that was a little bit crazy. But um, yeah, this one, as I say, it looks the part of an Imperial Stout. Don't think we need to say any more about the appearance of this beer. Let's have a wee look at the aroma then and just see what this beer is going to have in store for us. Oh yeah. This is very, very nice. It's interesting because, you know, the focus these days quite often is on these big kind of pastry stout beers. Um, but I do miss the old school Imperial Milk Stouts and Russian Imperial Stouts. And this one, um, this one really gives me that impression of, um, this one really gives me that impression of being a more um, just old school, like RIS uh, type beer. So yeah, the way everything pieces together in this aroma is really nice. So let's just break it down and describe it a bit more in depth for you, as we always like to do. So for me, this beer, the backbone is obviously the wood. You can smell that love the, the different barrels in this one. So you've got you can smell a little bit of that kind of more sweet bourbon brown sugar, for sure. So yeah, the bourbon spirits in there, bourbon brown sugar. You can also smell the... Yeah, you can definitely get a bit of the sherry as well, actually. My gran always used to love, uh, love a sherry. And I love, I have to admit, I love sherry and cognac barrels just because of the, the complexity that they add to the, uh, the complexity that they add to the, um, to the barrels. And of course, yeah, this is the thing. So these barrels that Loch Lee are using are the ones that Overtone are using uh, to, uh, to uh, brew the beer. So this is the really interesting thing. You've got the barrels that are already infused with sherry. 
bourbon and things like this and then Loch Lee, I believe, are using them to uh, to age their whiskey in and Overtone are taking these over. It's really, a, barrel aging is a really interesting process, I have to say. But yeah, you can smell all these different things in here. You can smell a little bit of the Scotch whiskey as well, which comes across as being like quite, like, because you can feel the bourbon and the sherry is the kind of backbone and then you've got the drier um, oaky characters under there obviously and a little bit of the char but then you can smell the scotch whiskey on top of that and it comes across as being like a little bit sort of having that kind of almost space brown sugary sweetness but you do get just a little touch of a kind of sweeter peat uh, to it as well um that's really interesting actually Need to try some of these Loch Lee whiskies now and see what they're actually like in the in the raw. But yeah, that's the impression just from the aroma of this beer. My impression that is that Loch Lee whiskey would be quite almost sweet and smooth and space-side like with just a little bit of that more kind of sweet, like cow isla type peaty character. Really interesting. But yeah, above all of the kind of barrel notes, um, and the barrel doesn't dominate the aroma too much, I would say, in this beer. And you have to be careful when you use Scotch whiskey barrels with uh, with brewing because they can they can really dominate the flavour. Um, the Finns love the smoky uh, whisk, Scotch whiskey barrels. That's where some of the best Scotch whiskey barrel East Imperial Stouts I've had have come from Finland, uh, oddly enough, because they love the big smoky flavours. Um, but yeah, on top of all that, you start to get the notes from the beer. So you get that roasty, toasty, uh, well-fired bread crusty character in there. You get a lovely kind of big sort of German rye bread character to this beer too. And when you've got all these kind of uh, carafa uh, type malts in here uh, and things like that, those are trademarks, of course, of the Weiermann, uh Maltery in Bamberg in Franconia, Northern Bavaria, Germany. Wonderful beer town, incidentally, Bamberg. But um, yeah, you can feel that tip, that uh, big, big German rye bread quality in there. There's a little bit of an almost like kind of sponge cakey, like chocolate sponge cakey element to this one as well. It's like a high percentage cocoa chocolate, 80, 90%. Um, there's a wee bit of like leathery brown sugar in this one as well. Um, you know, the things you can do with Imperial Stouts to increase the mouthfeel and complexity, you can barrel age them, of course, but you sacrifice a bit of the mouthfeel if you do that um, to thicken them up. You know, you can do a double mash, which probably is the case with uh, a big 12.5% or like this. Uh, you can also give, do a longer wort boil as well, which is going to caramelise the sugars more and give you that more leathery uh, kind of brown sugary character, which I am picking up in this one. So maybe they've done a combination with this, done a double mash. We'll be able to tell from the mouthfeel, I think, if they've done double mash, because you can just feel that more sticky character to it. But yeah, you've got that big leathery brown sugary note in there, treacle and molasses for sure, and a bit of toasty caramel. Um, but yeah, the way everything goes together in this one is... Uh, yeah, the way everything goes together in this one, I think, is... Uh, it's really pretty nice, actually. Um, the malty and yeasty side of this beer is really, really interesting. So, um, yeah. I like how that, I like how everything kind of pieces together in this. You get little bits of nuttiness out of it, little bits of milkier chocolate and things too, but I think we're going to get more um, complexity out of the actual flavour of this beer rather than anything else. Um, but let's have a wee look at the hoppy side of things just to round off the aroma section. Um, for me, the aroma set, uh, the, the, the hoppy side of this beer is quite interesting. Remember, with this one being barrel aged, a good bit of the hoppy character will have dropped out of it, but you certainly still get a good little bit of earthiness out of it. There's a wee bit of herbal character in there as well. Um, you do get some floral notes and some grassiness, but as I say, those take a back seat to the more malty uh, side of things. So, um, yeah, the way this one goes together, I think, is, uh, is really very, very nice. 
Mm. On the fruity side of things, it's um, yeah. On the fruity side of things, I would say that this beer is quite um, it's more as you know, it's a lot of black currant, a little bit of blackberry, maybe some figgy characters as well. Yeah, a little bit of black currant, a little bit of blackberry, some nice kind of figgy characters as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's too much more to say about that one. I would say this beer is actually kind of quite reserved um, in its aroma vibe, if we can call it that. Um, but it has got a lovely, lovely character to it. So, yeah, as I always say, take a wee bit of time to just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I think it's about time that we uh, taste this one and see what it's all about. So, yeah, this is the Our Barley Aged, a 12.5% Imperial Stout from the wonderful Overtone Brewing Company in Yoker in Glasgow in the motherland of Scotland in collaboration with Lochley Distillery from Craigie just outside of Kilmarnock. Let's do this. Slanja, Skoll, cheers. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's lovely. That is really nice. So, one of the things I often used to say, or I said originally, um, not often, about the overtone brewing stouts, um, the first ones that they released had really, really nice flavour profiles, but they just felt a little bit light uh, in the mouthfeel. They could have just done with being a little bit thicker. Um, and it's interesting to try this one because the, the subsequent Imperial Stouts I've had from Overtone, they had up the mouthfeel quite a little bit. If you come back, if you come back to this one, the mouthfeel I'm getting off of this is like the first ones uh, we had from Overtone. And the main reason for that is, like I say, when you barrel age a stout, you sacrifice a little bit of the mouthfeel to get all these um, infused flavours. Now, I wouldn't change that about this beer. I would not change the mouthfeel. I think they've got it bang on with this one so that's really interesting um but it's a lovely lovely beer this one and it finds a really nice balance between the barrel the roasty toasty side of things and the more malty side of the beer too so yeah i really like how this pieces together yeah Flavour profile wise, this is lovely. It's lovely stuff. Um, it's interesting because you've got a bit of roasty toastiness at the back of the palate, but then a smoother, sweeter type thing going on um, further forward. So yeah, I really do like how that um, how that goes together. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. So let's break this beer down and describe it a wee bit more in depth then as we always do middle third of the palate you can feel that kind of dry woody character just forming the backbone of the beer for me it's the char um the charred side of the wood that kind of sits there and the uh, on the base And yeah, as you go further forward from that, or as you go further up, I should say, and as your palate adjusts to the beer, you start to get more of the spirit coming out of this one. Um, so yeah, you can feel, I think, further back on the, if you have that woody layer, further back you're getting more of the bourbon. As you move further forward, you get more of the kind of sherry uh, as you get more, as you move further forward, you get more of the kind of sherry cask coming out of this one. So 
So yeah. And the further you go into the aftertaste, yeah, you get more of the kind of sweet, fruity character within the woody layer from the sherry for sure. And on top of that, I think you start to get the, on top of both of those, you start to get the whiskey. And as I say, that impression I have of the Loch Lee whiskey is that it has a little bit of that Speyside-y type sweetness. But then you've also got, um, you've got a little bit of the kind of grassiness and fruitiness in there. But then you also have a wee bit of that kind of sweet peat, as you call it, the cow isla type, uh, cow isla or bowmore type peatiness. Um, it's kind of like that. And that's really interesting. So yeah, that's the woody layer. Then you've got the spirit layer um, forming the base. And above that, you actually start to get the stout itself, which is nice. So yeah, the the um, the stout the kind of stout layer in this one for me is quite um, it's really quite interesting. Um, I like the. I like the kind of, the, it has a bit of that roasty, toasty, well fire bread crusty background, but then you're getting that kind of brown layer, that kind of brown bready layer at this one, the sort of German rye bready, brown bready character. It's very typical of the carafa uh, malts actually. So you get the bread crust, but it doesn't feel like black malt. It just has that nice kind of smooth, well fired character to it. The kind of rye bready note in there. Then you've got a kind of wholemeal brown bready character coming out of this one too. So yeah, the way that that goes together I think is really nice. You've got the rye bready layer, like a sort of more wholemeal brown bready layer, and then above that you can feel there's a kind of chocolatey character, and the chocolate has a more kind of spectrum to it. As I often say, um, more roasty, toasty, bitter flavours come out further back on the palate, sweeter flavours come out further forward. So the chocolatey layer that you have above the bread, you've got more of a, um, you've got more of a kind of, you know, like 80, 90% cocoa chocolate uh, further back. And as you move further forward on the palate, you're maybe getting like a 60% cocoa chocolate. So you can feel there's a wee bit of a spectrum there. But above the chocolatey layer, you start to get a little bit of the kind of brown sugar from me. So the brown sugary layer in this one, it feels like there's a kind of leathery type layer, which I think is really nice. So yeah, there's a sort of leathery brown sugary layer to this one, but not too leathery. It doesn't feel as if this beer has had too long a wort boil. And at the same time, it doesn't feel as if it's too kind of thick and sticky, so I'm wondering about the double mash type thing. But yeah, you've got that slightly, very slightly leathery, dry brown sugary layer. And then in the middle of your palate, you get that circle where the boozy character of the beer is. So you've got that leathery brown sugary layer, you can feel the more treacly molasses note in the dead center of your palate. And as you move further out from that, you get a wee bit more of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of character there, but that's very minimal. That takes a back seat to all the other stuff that's going on in this beer. The other flavours that you're going to uh, find in that middle of your palate are kind of nutty as well. Like it's got a bit of that nutty uh, type character that comes out of it. Maybe pecans, almonds. A little bit that comes out the further into the the aftertaste that you go as well but i think at that we've said everything we need to about the middle third of the the palette with this beer and that is in these imperial stouts by far the most complex part of the beer let's go to the back third of the palette then and just cover that so as i often say back third of the palette is going to give you very similar flavors to the middle 30 palette just at different intensities so in the border region between middle and back 30 palette you get a nice little bit of bready build up in there the kind of rye, sort of brown rye bready base and a bit of a more kind of sweet 
brown berry character on top. Base of the back, thirty a pound. You've got the to roasty toasty. Um, you get that. You you get the dry wood. Then you get the spirit layer, which was a little bit drier. Then um, you get the <coughs> pardon me, the bread crusty layer, which again feels a little bit drier as well. Then you've got that um, rye bready layer in there. Above that, you've got the more kind of brown bready type layer as well and you can feel those are a bit lighter and a little bit more airy and you can just feel a little bit of the kind of dry leathery brown sugary character creeping over the top of that and then above everything else you've got the yeasty side of the beer so let's focus on the yeasty flavors those are the bits that are that's the bit that's really unique to the back third of the palate in my experience So, the yeasty side of things for me, it's interesting because it gives you this, you have this really dense, sweet, brown bready character in the middle, a really dense, sweet, brown bready character, then it's surrounded by a kind of more airy rye bready sort of thing, and then a wholemeal brown bready character otherwise um and yeah the way that that all goes together is is really nice um so yeah the yeasty character in this one for me really is like a more kind of rye bready sort of thing and definitely you can feel back third of the palate the flavor is taller then as you move further forward into the middle third of your palate it just kind of condenses down and uh, squashes together that little bit more so um yeah the way everything uh, goes together i think is uh, it's really nice in this one. Um, yeah, so that's the malty and the yeasty side of the beer covered. Let's cover the hoppy and fruity side of things then. So like I said, this is a barrel aged beer, so a lot of the hoppy character will have dropped out of this. So in the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of, uh, of earthiness in there. As you move further forward, it's got a little bit of herbal character too. So yeah. Nice little bit of herbal character. Then as you move further forward, you do get little bits of floral, aromaticity, and a bit of grassiness, you know, it's typical of Magnum. But obviously these take a back seat to everything else that's going on in the beer. So um, yeah, the way everything kind of pieces together in this one is really very, very nice. So um, yeah, I like that about this beer. The way it goes together, I think, is uh, it's really very nice. So, gets a big thumbs up from me. Um, on the the fruity side of things, uh, or the front third of your palate, we should say, is where the fruity part comes out. So, let's look at that. The border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get a little bit of that bready build up again. Rye bread in the base, brown bread in the top. Then the base of the, the base of the front third of your palate is that the wood, and there's a bit of a sweet, smooth wood in there. Then on top of that, you get the spirit layer again, which you're seeing more of the kind of brown sugary side of the, the Loch Lee whiskey, I would say, in this case. But there is still that wee bit of peatiness there. Then you get the kind of rye bready layer as well. And then above that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy, fruity esters just uh, roll their way out of the beer. So yeah, the way that that goes together, I think, is really, really nice. So yeah, the way that all of this goes together for me is, uh, is really nice. But above all of that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. And for me, the fruity character on this one isn't madly complex. Um, it's mainly like a, there's a little bit of fig to it, but it's mainly like a kind of wet black currant sort of thing and uh, there's maybe a little touch of blackberry like at the back half of that um the back half of that front third of your palette is yeah black currant and then as you move further forward from that you've got a little bit of yeah like juicy blackberry and maybe in the very middle of the front third of your palette it's more like a kind of 
like ripe fig or there's maybe a, a very slight you know sour cherry to this one but it's an interesting beer nonetheless but obviously the big woody and peaty kind of notes and things just push their way uh, out of this one so um yeah the way that this beer goes together i think is uh, is really interesting so yeah i really like this one i really do like this and i would be very curious to see if my prediction about the loch lee whiskies having a wee bit of that space side brown sugar and a wee bit of the sweeter kind of the sweeter grassy sort of Kalila, Bowmore type PT character is right. I would be very, very curious to see that. So I need to try a Loch Lee whiskey at some stage. But yeah, all in all, this is a really interesting beer, this one. I don't think I've had a uh, Barley East Imperial Stout that's quite like this one in, in quite a wee while, in fact. So yeah, kudos to Overtone for doing something a wee bit special for their fifth birthday and for Loch Lee's 50th birthday as well. Let's round off this review with a wee look at the mouthfeel then. So mouthfeel wise, as I said, this is not the kind of thickest and stickiest imperial stout you're going to come across. This one, while it has a lot of dryness to it, particularly in the aftertaste, it's actually more kind of clean and smooth and slightly oily. Um, I really, really do like how this goes together. For me, it's bottom end of full bodied smooth carbonation as i say it does have a degree of slickness to it but the dryness really comes out of this one into the aftertaste ibu wise it's a bit interesting with this one because you can feel some of the hoppy bitterness still in the beer you could obviously age this for longer this was a 2023 release i should point that out so i think the can is maybe about five months old six months old something like that i do remember seeing this on their website toward the end of the year but yeah it's five months or six months old um something like that so the hoppy character would obviously drop out of this uh, the more they age it but you are getting some of the roasty toasty character which will contribute to the bitterness the dryness from the wood as well um so yeah all of these factors going on ibu wise if you can take take into account what I would call perceived bitterness versus calculated bitterness, it comes across as being somewhere in the region of like 50-ish IBUs, I would say. Uh, the malty and barrel character in this one, you've got a bit of you know dryness in the base, a bit of roastiness in there, smoothness, and a wee bit of a dry sweetness on top. And then you've got a lovely little bit of kind of juicy, wet kind of fruitiness into the aftertaste too. But all in all, uh, a wonderful beer this one i certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again and i'm certainly very curious to see what uh, overtone are going to throw up for us in the future i think this has been a really really nice beer to try but uh, yeah let's leave it at that once again um thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from overtone brewing company as well we will see about trying to review a whiskey from loch lee whenever i get the opportunity to but yeah this has been a wonderful imperial stout from overtone potentially my favorite one i've tried from them so far actually and quite different to the other ones too i would say so if you come across this can um it probably will be a little bit more expensive but you know you're not going to regret it this is a really really nice beer been a bit of a longer review this one but what can you do sometimes you get beers that just uh, capture your interest should we say and this one's certainly done that for me so big thumbs up to both overtone and loch lee let's leave it there check out my social media check out their social medias and i will see you guys in the next review our barley aged a wonderful 12.5 percent barley aged imperial stout slanger skull and cheers